Driving an electric vehicle is no rocket science, but what about driving an electric car on Indian highways? Hi, I'm Shubhadeep, you're watching HT Auto, and I recently drove from Delhi to Rishikesh in the Tata Nexon EV Max to understand the technology of the car on highways, and also more importantly, understand the infrastructure that's available for cars such as this. The distance of 240 kilometers between Delhi and Rishikesh may not seem like a lot to a few of you who've driven an electric car for far longer, but many more have been asking us a lot of questions about the feasibility of electric cars on Indian highways. As we drive back from Rishikesh to Delhi, I'll try to share some of my experiences, some of my learnings with you, so that you can make an informed decision of not just buying an electric car, but also to drive one for long distances. The entire highway stretch from Delhi to Rishikesh and obviously back is fairly easy with good road conditions and smooth traffic flow. You have to bisect Haridwar regardless of which route you opt for, but because we wanted to start on a full charge, we entered the holy city where there was a Tata fast charging point right next to the railway station. So we've made our way down from Rishikesh and we've made a pit stop here at Haridwar. That's primarily because this car now has around 35% range. Uh, in terms of kilometers, it's showing us about 100 kilometers. That's clearly not going to be enough to take us all the way to Delhi. But thankfully, there are a lot many charging infrastructures on the highway. But since we also want our breakfast and some Ganga Jal, we decided to make a stop here, right next to the Haridwar railway station. The charging point is there. It's very, very easy to just use this. It's a 30 kilowatt charger, so it is a fast charger. And uh, really just plug this in, use the Tata EZ uh, mobile application, and a few clicks, and that's it. You're all set to charge this vehicle. With a full battery under and an open highway ahead, it was time to make our way towards Rurki and Muzaffarnagar on National Highway 334. Did you know? that while there are multiple apps that can show you charging point locations, you can also find one on Google Maps. We found 11 between Haridwar and Delhi, most of which had multiple charge points. But it was the drive itself and not the charging that was our current priority. Ideally, you would want to leave early, but for us slightly lazy folks, it was a mid-morning start. Even then though, the traffic flow was constant and we maintained a decent speed. Now comes the most important part of actually how do you drive an electric vehicle to get maximum range from it. But to begin with, let me make certain things very clear. Solo driver here, one small bag in the, in the boot and that matters because how much weight you're packing inside a car also has an impact in a regular vehicle on the fuel efficiency and similarly on in an electric it will have an impact some to some degree on the range as well so with that out of the picture um, the settings that i've used to try and get the best range possible economy mode now electric vehicles come with various drive modes this one in particular starts on the city uh, drive mode by default there is a sport mode too but it's a no-brainer that you won't engage the sport mode on highways now, air conditioning plays a really big role in how much range you'll have. So, obviously in Indian conditions, at least in most parts of the country, you would want the air conditioning to be set to not just on, but to relatively high. Again, in this car in particular, you have the air conditioning levels up to 7 from 1, 7 being the strongest. It uh, has been set in this car to 2. Again, solo driver here and it has served my purpose. Now number three and equally important is regenerative braking. This particular car has three levels of uh, regen braking, three being the strongest and ideal for uh, when you're driving within city limits. But most people will tell you that regen braking is inconsequential on highways because you're hardly braking. My personal experience is don't keep it off, put it to regen two. I've, I've had it on regen two for most parts. That's because Apart from the newer expressways, the highways that we've driven on so far do require you to from time to time slow down. Now be very careful with this because don't leave everything to the regen braking. Uh, when you really need to slow down, always be ready and prepared to hit the brakes. 
Now, when you're driving an electric car, and especially when you're driving it on highways such as this, you have to make clearly some changes to your driving behavior, your instincts, and your drive patterns. So be gentle on the accelerator. The best way to drive this uh, electric car is to sort of stay between 80 to 100. That has the twin benefit of one, being good for the range of the vehicle, as well as keeping you on the right side of law. No sudden braking, of course, unless it's required. And just make your foot rest on the accelerator and let the car do uh, your bidding. Now that I've covered some of the basics of driving an electric car to attain a really respectable range or a good range, there are certain myths around electric vehicles in general. Um, and some of you have asked us these questions. Now, no question for us is silly. So let me just touch upon a few, few of what you have asked. Now, we've often been asked if we can charge our phones and what would that do uh, to the range of a vehicle. Well, there is absolutely no connection between the AV unit, you're charging your phone and, and things like that on the range of the vehicle. As I've previously mentioned, air conditioning, yes, will take a toll on the range. The Tata Nexon EV Max comes with um, seat ventilation too. So remember that has been off in this car as well. Another question that we've asked is, is it tougher on the range of a car when it's being driven in summers vis-a-vis -vis when it's being driven in winters? Well, no extremes are good and here let me just clarify that I'm not claiming to be an expert it has been a learning experience this drive for me as well so far but yes no extremes are um, great for any vehicle and especially so for an electric vehicle we've also received a lot many queries on how to ensure that the battery life is um, healthy I personally have always regarded the battery inside an electric car like uh, to be like the battery inside my smartphone now a lot of tech journalists will tell you and rightly so that you should not wait for the phone's battery to deplete to really low levels before you plug it in and you shouldn't charge it to a hundred percent my personal opinion the first part yes do not wait uh, till the electric car's battery is down to single digits before you start hunting and panicking and therefore the range anxiety kicks in that's not good for the battery that's not good for you so I would suggest when you're down to 25 and th uh, 25 to 30 percent Start looking for an electric uh, charging point, uh, even if you reach a point where, for whatever reason, the charger isn't working, you will still have enough juice to look for another other options. On the flip side though, I would suggest that you charge the electric vehicle to 90% at least, especially so if you're uh, taking the car out on highways. Go to 95 and even 100%, uh, assuming that you do highway runs only occasionally or at least you don't do it daily it shouldn't uh, really matter it shouldn't have any adverse effect on your um, electric car's battery life but while the nexon ev max was munching miles with ease it was time for us to stop for a quick meal break so as i mentioned it is always a good idea to take a break after a few hours of driving we've driven about 100 kilometers from the Haridwar railway station where the last charging point was at and the car was down to 75 percent it really was good enough to take us all the way to Delhi but we decided to stop here and uh, take a break uh, grab a bite and there are clean washrooms here as well and while we were charging ourselves we decided to plug this car in as well 45 minutes and this car is back to about 95 percent and frankly that's uh, all the time we have as far as this charging point is concerned so now it's the home run all the way home to Delhi. With lunch done for a happy tummy and charge done for a happy EV, we once again headed out for our last leg back home. This time, the AC was turned on full blast, confident that the Nexon EV Max will handle whatever I threw its way. This is where a car with a respectable range, regardless of charging location density, helps. And soon enough, the Delhi landscape loomed in on the horizon. So we've reached the concluding part of this special feature. We are about 20 kilometers from central Delhi and uh, it has been quite an interesting experience for us to drive an electric vehicle over around 500 kilometers. Now the cost dynamics are also very, very important, very significant. On an average, we spend about 1500 rupees to charge this car. Uh, for the duration that we've had it 
from Delhi to Rishikesh and Rishikesh to back. Now around 500 kilometers, 1500 rupees. That's quite a good deal considering a petrol powered vehicle with a mileage of around 15 kilometers per liter. We would have spent uh, well over double of that amount. EVs are inevitable, but they also expect you to make certain changes. Yes, you will have to do some planning till the time infrastructure is absolutely robust, not just in cities, but in highways. And yes, they do demand some time of yours because they will take an hour, hour and a half using fast chargers to be powered up. But the benefits are numerous and the possibilities quite endless. I hope you enjoyed this sort of a basic presentation on what electric vehicles on highways are all about and the highway infrastructure. For an absolutely detailed report of our experience, do log on to the HT Auto website. For now though, thanks so much for watching.